Do you consider this a supply zone on this 30 minute chart? Generally accepted knowledge says that this is part of a drop based drop. Other people might say that a pullback in a downtrend doesn't mean it's a supply zone, since that would mean covering the whole chart with random zones. So for those of you who say yes to a supply zone, let's now decide on the bottom of the zone. For those who said no, just stick with me for a moment. Obviously the top of the zone will start at the top of this green candle. Now decide where the bottom should go. This would be conservative, but would prevent false signals. This would be generous, causing a mix between getting more moves but also getting more false signals. How about this one? Unless you know something that the rest of us don't, most people in real time would not move the supply zone down this far. Let's now watch the bars appear one by one with this zone marked out on the chart. It's way bigger than it should be. Even after creating a pretty unconventional supply zone, it still wasn't big enough for price to come back to it. But wait a minute, what if I'm trying to sell the idea that supply and demand is your path to becoming a profitable trader? What if I'm also trying to sell you a course where I explain how you could have made money on this trade? And I'm also selling access to a trading community where I share exclusive information about key levels. I'm not gonna do live trading though. Well, only the ones I win. If that was what I was doing, here's how I would have drawn the chart. See, if you had done it like this, you would have actually entered in right at that circle with puts or by shorting shares. Look at how easy it is to draw zones on something that's already happened. Okay, this zone seems pretty good based on the idea of zones being created from imbalances. This is two days later, so let's see how it played out. Oh, well, that wasn't a great example. We're looking for consolidation, aka agreement between buyers and sellers, and then a big move out of there, according to the expert. Z Okay, four days later we finally get another setup on Roku. That red candle is consolidation, and the green moves up create the demand zone. Based on what the expert said, this is exactly what we're looking for. So, how did it go? Oh, never came back. Before you leave a comment with a question, be sure to watch this whole video. You might be thinking to yourself, well yeah, it's easy to go and pick a few charts to prove my point about supply and demand being wishy-washy at best. Yeah, that's the point. You can do that with anything. I could make a four hour long video with thousands of pictures of completely random shapes having some sort of predictive power if I searched through enough data. Let's say I have a fish drawing that predicts reversals on tops and bottoms using the points on its fins. However, I can stretch the top fin down and the bottom fin up in order to show it perfectly capturing reversals, and then I justify myself doing that by saying it's dependent on market context and by using different time frames. You might say, wait a minute. In real time, how am I supposed to know which time frame I should use to create these zones if different times make different zones? Well, that's easy. Just do a top-down analysis. This is on a 30-minute chart. Now, when you're plotting out these zones, it's always important for you to start at the highest time frame. You know, start at weekly, go down to daily, then 4-hour, then 2-hour, 1-hour, 30-minute. But Iman says you. How am I supposed to know which time chart to use? Because I can't use all of them. Well, buy my course and I'll let you know. Oh, I almost forgot to mention that in this video of my fish indicator, every reversal will be perfectly called at the top and bottom. We always enter at the very bottom and we get out at the very top. This was from 3108 all the way to 3106. So this was a two point risk and we got 20 points to the upside because of that. So that is a 10 to one risk to reward ratio. We're risking two points to make 20. That is 10 to one. That is a no-brainer type of trade. If you're wondering how in the world you could have predicted to get out at the very top and nowhere else, you're just missing the market context. This trade was obviously a no-brainer. No you literally don't even need to have a brain to call this bottom and top and to draw the demand zone perfectly so that you get no false signals. Remember, the size of the supply and demand zones are dependent on how far the future price will need to go to make it look like the zone has predictive power. That's why the size of the zone is always different. See how this one is one third of the candle size, yet sometimes we get ones like this that are just massive? That's because we adjust the zones when going back on historical data to find some confirmation by good examples of it working. This is because sometimes we have to make the zones bigger or smaller to get rid of all false signals and to only capture the perfect reversals. If you're wondering how to do this in real time, you'll need to buy my course. Actually, wait, no. I'm not going to respond to any comments they have on my videos. I'm going to hide behind a paywall so that you're forced to give me money if you want access to my knowledge. Now that's a good business plan. And while I'm at that, I will also only post videos where I make big profits. Actually wait, no. 
I'll make videos that are mostly about how much money the people paying to be on my Discord server are making, and I'll only mention losses when those losses turn into wins. It's all coming together now. An educational trading channel without a single video dedicated to being wrong on a trade. But wait. Let me make sure to include that maybe there is, but I couldn't find one. That way the entire takeaway from this video isn't just that while ignoring the 20 other things I've said up until this section. As for only posting wins, that's definitely not happening to create a public image of being a trader capable of teaching you how to win big and never lose or only lose tiny, tiny amounts. Just a bunch of no-brainer 1 to 10, 1 to 50 risk-reward ratios. That brings us to the reason why this video is being made. I'm all for educating others on YouTube, but if you're going to use my name, please make sure you are saying accurate statements, especially when you do not know how I trade. Smiley face. Don't f***ing end a passive-aggressive comment with a smiley face. Especially when you do not know how I trade. Smiley face. I used to watch his videos when I was a beginner and was susceptible to the belief that a guy on the internet could teach me how to be a profitable trader instead of actually putting in any work of practicing trading. I'd enthusiastically take notes, go practice on a chart, find it working 10% of the time at best, and then think I was the problem and that the solution was to watch more videos. It's not the system that's flawed, it's me. I just drew the zone incorrectly. Time to watch another video. I refer to that as the indicator slash trading system loop trap thing and made a video on it, which you can click on the top right to watch later, but not now. We have a lot to talk about. Now, the entire reason he's leaving this comment is because I criticized how nonsensical this supply zone's size was. It made no sense on a 5 minute chart, but it's because he made it on a 30 minute chart. And guess what? It's still a garbage f***ing supply zone on the 30 minute chart. And the entire first part of this video when we did that supply zone identification exercise was on this exact chart from the original video. How many of you supply and demand traders actually drew it down that far? And if you're going to make a comment saying that you did predict it to be exactly just perfectly there to only capture the one spot where it came back, I'd also love to know your thoughts on every other thing I've said here. It was on the 30 minute candle chart that this supply zone was created from. I had you come to your own conclusion about what the size of the zone should be before you saw what happened later. Not so easy to make zones when you don't know what's happened yet, eh? I'm just kidding, I'm not Canadian. You know how easy it is to just keep scrolling back through data until you find a spot where there was a reversal, and then you just adjust the size of your magical reversal square until it only gets touched by price right before making a big reversal. It's easy to make something out of nothing when you have thousands of companies and thousands of days worth of charts to find something happening more than once. I ironically did it to prove a point earlier, and I hope you caught that. If you could learn only one thing from my videos, my hope is that you become skeptical- Whoa. My hope is that you become skeptical of what everyone says online. If you couldn't tell, the top picture is the chart from his video on 5 minute candles, and the chart below is the exact same thing but on the 30 minute candles, to scale. It's a garbage zone on the 30 minute, and it's a perfect example of hindsight bias. The biggest part about this interaction that bothers me, if that's what you want to call it, is that this could have been a great opportunity to have a dialogue or an actual discussion about anything I said. I made well over five solid criticisms of supply and demand concepts, yet the entire takeaway was one tiny aspect of a 13 minute video jam packed with information. Are you kidding me? Where's the rebuttal on my points about the idea that leftover orders are the driving force of price? I literally learned that from him, and it's the most illogical and counterintuitive f***ing concept I've ever heard in trading. Then validates that they were all the orders were to the buy side, leaving this balanced period to have buy orders that did not get filled, waiting to be filled once price then pulls back into this area. Supposedly, price leaves this consolidation area because of an imbalance, and when it comes back to this area, the leftover orders from that big movement make it go back up again. Bullshit. That's a load of bull, and you can watch the part 2 video if you want to hear more about how illogical that is. Particularly in instances where the price goes below the demand zone or above the supply zone. I'm not going to get into that again in this video. Where's the response to the conflict of interest between being a salesman and an educator? Am I really supposed to trust my science teacher who works at Exxon and is constantly telling me how good oil is for the environment and that there's nothing wrong with it? Am I supposed to believe and trust the motivations of a teacher who teaches about the thing he sells that makes him his money? Please explain how that's different from being an educator of supply and demand while also selling a course on it. A salesman is incentivized to only share the best parts about the thing they're selling while also hiding the bad parts. 
And while we're at it, where's the rebuttal on the fact that every trader on YouTube says something different about how to draw supply and demand zones? The response goes something like, it's based on market context, or it's an art form. Man, what a convenient way to give a complete non-answer that looks like an answer. How do I become a lawyer? Oh, a bit of this and a bit of that. Oh, thanks, that's really helpful and now I know how to do it. Thank you for that abstract answer that left me to be responsible with interpreting its true meaning. Here, take this abstract response and turn it into something concrete. That way I can never be wrong and it's always your fault when you interpret it incorrectly. Pretty clever. Now let's take a look at another thing I pointed out that I wish Carmen responded to. Carmen made this a supply zone because according to him, price went from an area that buyers and sellers agreed on, aka consolidation, to a clear direction out, aka an imbalance. Okay, so here you see what it looks like from his video on the 5 minute chart. Ignore the fact that he made it just big enough so that there would be no false signals and so that the trade would look absolutely perfect. Please explain to me how this consolidation and then a clear direction is not the exact same thing as this. Oh wait, that was a trick question. It's because price didn't come back to it and then go back down, so marking this as a zone wouldn't look good for the product that we are selling. Here's how that would look on the 5 minute chart. It's unfortunate that I made one small mistake in my video, which led to that being the only focus point for many commenters and for Carmine himself. Makes it really easy to ignore the other 12 minutes of the 13 minute video. While we're here, I would love to know how two candles accounting for 70% of the stock's entire range in one day does not qualify as an imbalance worthy of a supply zone. Would absolutely love to know the logic behind that one. Is it because it's the morning candle? Okay, then how come this one and this one aren't marked either? Surely it's not because they don't support the idea that reversals can be perfectly predicted by buying a course. Also, this spot right here is clearly another drop in price out of a consolidation area. Whatever. That one's the weakest, so I guess we only have three other instances. Here's a couple clips from the video I made. The point I'm trying to make is that you can't just say that market context determines the size of the zone in order to justify extending its size to anything you want. If a book had this many plot holes, it would be a bad book. And I would be suspicious of anyone saying it was a good book. I'm not here to make friends with YouTubers, I'm not here to make money, and I will call out BS for as long as I'm on here. It's so easy to be like the secret mindset or the dozens of other channels that take 10 minutes to look through charts searching for instances where some nonsense idea is proven. And believe me, eventually I'm going to make a video demonstrating that by using a fish or a dinosaur chart pattern, whatever. Instead of being like those channels, I will publicly share my objectively true criticisms of statements, concepts, and ideas that people take for granted because they trust the source. I don't care that there are people who got value from his course or any other course. That's not what this video is about. Nobody is telling you that you can't successfully trade supply and demand. This isn't an attack. I'm not stirring up drama, and I'm not doing anything other than just not making an exception when it comes to getting to the bottom of what's true and what's a scam in trading. I find it disgusting and pathetic that there are people here who are trying to take advantage of vulnerable traders by selling them a course. As if reading a document and looking at a couple of pictures is all that it takes. It's unethical and morally wrong. So I will continue to update my free roadmap on my free website and talk to my awesome community on my free discord while answering long emails, YouTube comments, and emails for free. I don't care what other channels think of me because I'm not here for them. I think their courses are f***ing stupid. I don't think they bring any true value, and most traders realize they've been bamboozled after it's too late. I used to adamantly defend technical analysis and chart patterns. Can you imagine that? I'm here for the traders struggling with emotions. I'm here for the traders needing someone to talk to. I'm here for the beginners, the intermediates, and the experts. I'm here for you. I'm not here for the YouTubers trying to sell you something, and I'll make a video criticizing every trading channel until the end of time if I have to. You want a quality trading channel? Watch Day Trader Next Door, Benjamin, In The Money, and go to my website. There's no information that can't be learned for free. I look forward to five years from now when my website's roadmap to learning how to trade is complete and I'm a goddamn millionaire. Not how to trade, but how to learn trading. You don't buy a course to learn how to ride a bike. You just do it. You put in work, actual effort, not just watching a video or reading a course. Thank you to my patrons who help motivate me to continue making videos. Unfortunately, the videos that actually help people are not the ones that people click on. 
so the Patreon money helps me out tremendously. If I wanted to make money and didn't actually care about helping people, I'd sell a course. If you support my mission here, signing up for Weeble using my link in the description is the best way to support me. They give both of us lots of free stocks. And also check out the trading firm Trade Day in the description if you want to trade with someone else's money. I hope this video serves as a symbol for the mission of why I'm here.